so it's a bit of a snowy day today here in Newfoundland or in my neck of the woods in Newfoundland. So um, I'm taking this opportunity to work on some seed stuff for the spring, which is very exciting. I can't believe we're into February. Today is February 2nd. Um, and I'm going to work on some cold stratification of some seeds today. So anybody that doesn't know what cold stratification is, I guess in a nutshell, it's basically um, putting your seed through a cold period to mimic like a winter period um, and it helps break the dormancy of certain seeds. So not all seeds need cold stratification and some actually it can be harmful to the seed. So, um, but there are a lot of perennials that do benefit from it. Some require, well, I don't want to say require it because there are, there are some that will germinate without it, but often will germinate very poorly. Um, so to increase your success rates of certain perennial uh, seed germination, um, you're going to want to cold stratify. Usually it'll say on the package or if you're, um, you know, do a little bit of research online, you can uh, get that information. But some common ones are four that I'm doing today. Um, I'm doing purple coneflower or echinacea today. I'm doing yellow prairie coneflower. I'm doing black eyed Susan. And I'm doing marshmallow. Um, so those are the four I'm doing today. I also have lavender and um, butterfly milkweed already stratifying. But these I'm going to do today. So I'm going to do two methods today of cold stratifying. Um, kind of just doing a little bit of an experiment for myself to see which one works better. Um, one method takes a little bit of space in your fridge, but we have a spare fridge in the basement, our egg fridge actually. It is getting pretty full, but I think I can squeeze the tray in. But we'll go through it. Um, and Hopefully, you know, in a couple of months time, I'll be able to do a little bit of a comparison to see which method worked better for, for me. All right, so the first method I'm gonna use is, I don't know, I guess I'll call it the paper towel method. So this is a moist cold stratification. Some um, seeds, you can actually do a dry cold stratification. So you basically just take your pack of seeds and you put it in the fridge. And actually, most of these, I think, would be okay with the dry stratification as well but uh, I prefer the moist stratification, so we're gonna do that. So the first one I'm gonna do is Black Eyed Susan. So for this paper towel method, I basically just have a Ziploc bag and I have it labeled and I put the date on it and I just use, for most of my labeling, I just use cheap dollar store painter's tape. It's cheap, it's easy, you can take it off. I don't know, I just, it's simple. So that's what I use. So what we're gonna do, you can probably see my dog in the background fussing around there. So I have a little bowl of water. You can do this at the kitchen sink, but I'm just gonna do it here for demonstration purposes. So I have um, a full size paper towel. So this is actually one that separates into two pieces, but I made it a full size. So I'm just gonna kind of fold it into four so I can put it down into my bowl. Just get it wet. Now you don't want this dripping wet. You just want it just moist. So I'm gonna squeeze all of the water out of it. Till it's just like a moistened paper towel, just damp. So I'm just gonna unfold the damp paper towel and we can leave it just like that. So it's a full paper towel, but we'll leave it in half for the planting. So we're gonna do Black Eyed Susan. So I'm just gonna take a few out. Black Eyed Susan um, seeds are very tiny. So because germination rates are so um, erratic with a lot of these seeds and it really depends on how well it's cold stratified and that kind of thing. I usually try to plant more than I'm going to need. Uh, that being said, one of our big goals this year on our homestead is to try and work on beautification, um, also try and attract more pollinators to our property. Uh, we don't have bees yet, 
someday maybe, but um, just to try to make it a, a, you know, more attractive to the pollinators. So I probably have a bit too much there, I don't know. But, so you're just basically going to sprinkle it over your paper towel. You can do this with a, a, a damp sand or vermiculite uh, mixture, that kind of thing. But I'm just, I have paper towels and that's what I'm going to do. So that's basically it. So you just do that, fold it over, kind of trap those seeds in between the double layers of paper towel. And then we're just going to put it in our bag. So now this is going to go in my refrigerator and I'm going to leave this for at least a month. Um, cold stratification um, times vary really depending on the seed. Um, so it's best to kind of try and look it up. But generally speaking, like loosely speaking, I guess the best um, times for cold stratification is anywhere from a month to three months. So I'm going to do about a month. I may do may do an extra couple weeks, I don't know, but I'll do about a month for sure. Um, after a month's period, I'll take it out and I'll plant it as usual uh, in my trays under my grow lights. So the only thing is to, you should keep an eye on this in your fridge. It should still, it should stay kind of damp, but just keep, keep an eye to it because every now and again, you can get, um, you can get some seeds that germinate. Um, it has happened to me. It ha I'm, it's not uncommon. Um, if you do get any that start to germinate, then you're going to have to take them out and plant them, obviously, because they're, they've broken dormancy. They're ready to be planted. All right, so that is Black Eyed Susan. So I have four packs of seeds to be stratified now, four packs this way. So basically what we're going to do for our second method of moist cold stratification for this little experiment I'm doing is we're going to um, use a tray of soil just like we would plant our any other seeds that we're planting or that we're starting in the house. Um, we're going to plant our seeds as we normally would. I'm going to mist this with just some a spray bottle with some water just to moisten it. You just want it damp and we're going to put this in the fridge. Whole tray is going in the fridge. So this is going in our spare fridge in the basement um, so it can kind of be tucked away and, and uh, out of the way. And we're going to leave it the same amount of time. We're going to leave it about a month, uh, anywhere from a month to three months. I'm going to leave it for one month just because of the timing of our last frost and that kind of thing. And once um, your time period is up, you're just going to take it out of the fridge and you're going to plant, keep growing it as usual. You're going to, you know, water it and have it under your grow lights, however it is you normally do your seed starting. All right. So we're going to start with purple coneflower. So I'm going to, I don't know how many seeds I have less left in these packs, but we'll see. So I always plant more than I think I'm going to need because um, it doesn't all sprout, of course, you know, the germination rates can vary. And you know, when you're growing it, seed starting, anytime you're seed starting, it's, it's not a bad habit to, to plant more than you need because you often have issues with um, survival of the plant when you're trying to harden them off outside, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to plant quite a bit here. So I'm going to put, you know, three, four, five seeds at least in each one of the coneflower. 
So I'm just going to kind of sprinkle them over the soil. Now these um, need to be planted about a half inch deep. So <clears throat> what I normally do, I like things as easy as possible. Less fuss the better. So I just kind of sprinkle them on top of the soil and then I just throw a tiny bit of soil over it just to get my depth. So I'm going to do four, four rows of that. <clears throat> so I'm using just a pro mix for this. It's not the pro mix I wanted for seed starting. I usually use, or I wanted to use the one in the white bag. I can't remember what it's called now. It's pro mix, but it's, um, it's like a finer texture. It's less dense, more porous, I think. So it's better for those tiny little seeds and seedlings. But we didn't have any at our local store yet. All right, so I have four rows of purple cauliflower. So now what I'm gonna use is my markers you can probably see in the camera there's some old green tape here from last year. I used some green tape as my markers on this last year. This is an old tray. But this year I am going to use these again. So these are little tags that I made out of red solo cups. I made them a couple of years ago. I don't know if you can see them in the camera. But it's just little, I just cut them out of red solo cups. It's cheap, it's easy. Just use a sharpie to write on it. Perfect. So I'm just going to put that in the fourth one because I planted seeds in all four of these rows. So that's kind of how I do my, my markers. I don't put one on each row unless I got a different variety in each row. But I basically, um, I know I put my marker in row four because that's where I stopped. So I know the first four rows, anything before that marker is the purple cone flower. That's just the way my brain works. All right, so we'll do yellow prairie coneflower in the next rows. So these are tinier seeds, and these only have to be planted. I think it's a quarter inch. No, it's a, it says half inch as well. They're a bit tinier, so usually the depth of seed kind of correlates with the size of the seed, right? The smaller the seed, the closer to the surface it needs to be planted, usually. So I'm just going to sprinkle these on as well. I'll see how many rows I do of these. Probably three if I can get it. That's it. I'm just going to go through the rows and I'm going to plant my Black Eyed Susan and my Marshmallow as well the same way. stratification is all ready to go for these four varieties. So I have my tray all planted and I have my four little bags of moistened paper towel with the seeds. So all of this is going to go in the fridge like I had said. I do have to still spray this with water. I just don't know where my water sprayer is right now so I gotta go try and dig it out. I thought it was right next to me but it's not. Um, so I'm gonna spray this and I will get it in the fridge and I'll get this in the fridge as well. And I'm gonna keep it there for a month. So around the 1st of March, I will be pulling this out and uh, we'll see how it all goes. So of course, if you are gonna do this, like I said before, keep an eye on it in the fridge just to make sure nothing germinates 
in the fridge on you. If it does, you do have to take it out and uh, just treat it as you normally would any other seed. And that's it. So we'll see how this goes. Hopefully we get lots of beautiful flowers for the homestead this year because um, like I said, that's one of our big goals is to beautify the property a bit more this year with um, a lot more flowers and perennial flowers, things that come back and take le like less maintenance basically, which is what I'm all about. I should mention that these are all varieties that I of seed that I sell in my Etsy store. Um, if you are interested at all in any of them, you can certainly check out my Etsy shop. Um, I'll put the link down in the description. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're interested and like the video, share the video, that kind of thing. I greatly appreciate it.